something about Islam that you left. It was just the fact that it was different to use the outcast, use the odd one out. He's about. Salam alaikum rahmatullah. How you doing, my bro? She, she opened up a can of worms, my brother. Huh? Um, she was saying that you used to be Muslim. Yeah. What, what, what does that mean? Um, when I was in my early 20s, yeah. I reverted. I spent a couple of years, but there was a lot of issues. Uh, certain friends and certain situations, I kind of just separated myself from any kind of anything else that would make me different than anything else. Does that make sense? Okay. So, like, uh, religion makes me separate. Being black makes me separate. Them kind of things. So, mm. I just, so you stop being black now? No! <laughs> 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 uh, you identify as a non-black person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. So I, you, I respect where you come from because what's, what's ended up happening is um, I get it because sometimes like you want to fit in and you don't want to like create another obstacle. So black is an obstacle. Yeah. Um, economical. Um, how much money you've got is an obstacle. Do you know what I mean? Your environment, your postcode is an obstacle. Now, what you believe becomes an obstacle. But I think, like, look, you're a different man now, no? Yeah. Were you the same man you was 20 years ago? Nah. Uh, she, can, she can testify to you, you know, yeah? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Did you know him when he was in his 20s? Yeah. No? <laughs> glad, glad, glad. Yeah? Uh, so, now we're a fresh perspective, fresh pair of eyes, because it wasn't necessarily something about Islam that you left. It was just the fact that it was different to use the outcast, use the odd one out. I wouldn't say and it's just that, I would also say it's very, it's like a lot of devotion as well. And, and for, at my age at the time, okay. I gave as much as I could, but it wasn't enough. What, what, what kind of devotion to what? Tell me. Ramadan used to find That I could deal with and stuff like that, but it was also a lot of giving up a lot of things that... Like what? No. Uh, Easy, just keep in mind it's being filmed, <laughs> yeah. the missus is here, oh, your kids here. A lot of things, a lot of okay. things, isn't it? But a lot of things that you're, you're not really so much, I wouldn't say allowed to do, but you should be doing. <coughs> Drinking, is that something you do now regularly? Yeah, not as much as I used to. Yeah. So like I said, look, from a new perspective, like, do you see the harms of drinking alcohol? Uh, Imagine you had to make a choice, yeah. Yeah? not your personal choice. As in the world, the world that you're raising your child in. Yeah. There's either alcohol or there's no alcohol. Which one would you choose? No alcohol. No alcohol. Yeah, but that's a good question. Because <laughs> the whole world sees what alcohol does anyway, isn't no, it? No, no, but you know that as a general rule, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. If you could um, get your child to either take the risk of drinking sensibly or not drinking at all, yeah, because it's a risk, because he might drink sensibly, he might get addicted to it, he might have a car accident, it might lead to domestic yeah. violence, he might lead to liver problems, yeah. or it might not. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's so, why these things are good vices though, isn't it? You know what I mean? So, so you see it as a vice. Yes. Yeah. So the way I look at it is like, look, at the end day, in Islam, we differentiate between what you need to enter paradise and what would um, get you sin or um, obstruct you to get in paradise. It doesn't mean you're not going to enter paradise. Yeah, It just means that um, you're disobeying God. Yeah. But you can disobey God and still be a Muslim. As long as you don't reject the belief in God. As long as um, you don't make partners with God. As long as you don't challenge the law of God. Yeah, I'm weak. I can't, I can't particularly act upon this law of God. Yeah? I can't implement it in my life, but I know it's wrong. I'm trying to stop. Or at the moment, I don't want to stop due to weaknesses, but I know it's wrong. Yeah. So you're not, you're not rejecting the law of God. Because rejecting the law of God is you rejecting God. Yeah. Does that make sense? Because yeah. it's like disbelief. It's like, no, God, you're wrong, I'm right. You've forbidden this but there's goodness in it. Like, wait, you're challenging God now. So none of that is taking place. Yeah, what's your name, by the way? Jamal. Jamal. Ridwan, young man? Therese. Therese. Madam? Sarah. Sarah. Nice name. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm gonna, we're going to talk about Sarah, yeah? You, you, you know what Sarah means, right? Um, princess. Um, flower. It means princess. 
but it's famous for the being um, the Arabic for the wife of Abraham. Yeah, so it's Arabic, it's Arabic word. Yeah, and that's yeah, I am Arabic. Are you Arab? Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> this is too much. This is too much. I'm going to go back to it, then we're going to address this, and I'm going to talk about all of this. I'm going to unravel all of this, yeah, with your permission. Um, so I'm saying that, look, do you believe there's one God? There can only be one, but I don't know who he is exactly, but yeah. There's one. Okay. So yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna go into who that one God is, hopefully, uh, and give you good reasons and convince you of who that one God is. Yeah. Now that being said, there's one God. Now, um, does that one God have the right to be worshipped and obeyed? Um. The one God that created you and me. Yes, if that's fact, yes. No, 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 because the fact of the matter is, are you in any doubt that there is a God? And that God is one? Late. Yeah, kind of. Why? A lot of loss and a lot of bad things that happen in the world. But does that necessitate there is no God? It just, I believe that it just means that it's bad people. It it's God's no, no, bad things happen, yeah? Um, it doesn't necessitate that it's God, because I, I commonly have this question, conversation, and I say that like, I could get rid of all the evil in the world. One condition, yeah? No free will. If I got rid of free will, there will be no more evil in the world. Is that a willing sacrifice? That, that ties into what you were saying. Not really, no, not at all. Actually. Go on, tell me what's evil. People are, can do evil actions. Yeah. Yeah? You know what I mean? Then you argue, oh, poor people. It's out of their control. But the fact of the matter is, um, Islam is based on five pillars. Yeah? The third pillar is zakat. Do you know this? Not from memory, no. Yeah? Now, zakat is a tax for the rich to give to the poor. Yeah? Okay, yeah. You give 2.5% of your wealth you haven't spent in one calendar year to the poor. We eradicated poor poverty in the time of um, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. There was no more poor people. And it wasn't five mans in the desert. It was like we had a large empire. Yeah? And the, it, it may not necessarily be seen something you've taught because it depends on where you got educated. Does it make sense? Yeah. yeah. If you're two in this country, like, it's very biased towards um, the Western and course, yeah. British colonialism and the, their history. And it's like, my mind was like, England was just the best. They done everything right. And then I looked into Islamic history and realized that wait, the Muslims and um, what's his name, Khalid bin Walid and Umar bin Al Khattab. They achieved a lot of things, but we just didn't get too about it. Yeah. So it's the only economical system that's divinely inspired, divinely revealed, and look what we've achieved. There's no other economic system that's able to eradicate poverty. Does that make sense? Yeah. So then it's like when you submit your will to the commandments, the divine laws of God like problems will disappear yeah it's a lengthier conversation and i'll unpack that but you see that look a lot of the problem is man-made problems it's oh, our yeah. problems due to us not obeying god yeah so <clears throat> do you, so can we establish as a fact there's no doubt there is a god I still couldn't agree with you 100%. You can't, okay. Can't. Then, no, no, then, then oh, let's take a step back. Let me convince you there's a God. Yeah? By the way, where you are in this conversation? Uh, I, um, I believe there is just one God. Okay, so um, you can go and get a drink. <laughs> well, let, me, let me convince him. Yeah? You might find this a little bit boring. Um, but okay. Now, can something come from nothing? No, it's impossible. Impossible. Can you give me an example of something coming from nothing? Okay. Then, where did the universe come from? <laughs> yeah. 
Can you say with 100% certainty it didn't come from nothing? Can we say with 100% certainty it didn't create itself? Because that means it had to exist and not exist at the same time. No, nothing can come from nothing. Yes. yes. Something and the universe something. began to exist. Yeah. So it's missing a cause. Yeah. And I would hypothesize, I would claim that that cause is God, Allah, yeah, all powerful, um, has knowledge, and does things with a purpose. Does that make sense? And is uncreated. I don't want to go too deep into um, stuff that you haven't brought to me because I try to like tick all the boxes out of conversations like, I end up confusing them. So I'm not going to talk about stuff if you don't bring it to me. But yeah, let's just say I've got the answers, but I'm going to let you like ask me questions first, right? Um, so if it didn't come by itself, yeah, and it can't create itself, and it was created, then I would say that that creator is God. It's something that's all powerful, all knowing. How do you feel about that? Or oh, give me an alternative. Oh, no. yeah. So at the moment, science, tell me science. What I, science? I can tell you no, 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 no. Science, science, science doesn't have a horse in the race. Because I've spoken to uh, professors of quantum mechanics, yeah? and it's like the very arrogant. Some of them are atheists, some are not, some are fierce. They're like, look. This specific conversation I had, he said um, he can tell me to the very moment the Big Bang happened. So that's fine. And then he was telling me about atoms and um, black hole. So that's fine. I'm talking about nothing. Where did the Big Bang happen if there was nothing? Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. He walked away. He had, a, he had a little hat, though. you know them, like a cowboy hat. Yeah. And he's like a really English guy, speaking like really good English. I'm like, why are you wearing a cowboy hat? Like, that makes no <laughs> sense. But I didn't want to say that to him, yeah? And he was like really arrogant, and he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then when I stomped him after a 20-minute conversation, like, he didn't have a response, and he just walked away. I'm like, does that mean I've won? <laughs> like, have you tapped out? Like, what's the mystery? Like, come back. Do you know what I mean? Can I give you a hat? Give me a hat at least or something. Do you know what I mean? We'll wear around like a, as my victory. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I'm saying that look, science can tell you it's limited by space, time, things which are tangible. Does that make sense? And I'm saying God Almighty is outside of space, time, and this universe. So science can't have a view on it. Yeah? yeah. In the defense, I'll say that, look, I can't use science to prove God. Nor can they use science to disprove God. So that's not even my argument. My argument is, it's more logical and rational to believe in a creator than to believe this universe came from nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So until, yeah, you have a better alternative. Be a fierce. Believe, believe in God. Oh, God might not exist. Like, I haven't seen everything and I'm not sure. But with the information you have now, you're, you believe in God. In essence, yes. Yeah. Nah, no, you can't be one foot in one. Like, I'm not pressuring you, I'm not forcing you, but th th does that make sense? Yeah. Like, you don't apply that level of cynicism to other parts of your life. Yeah? Is this your partner? Yes. Are you sure? Yeah. How do you know? There's moments no, today. <laughs> yeah, she was, she was out of your eye view. She, she could have been replaced. She, like, does that make sense? Like, how do you know? How do you know? Your mum is your mum, your dad's your dad. Like, how do you know? Does that make sense? Yeah. But you accept it. 
Yeah. Yeah? Until you have reason to believe she's not who she claims she is. Yeah? Your mum's not your mum, your dad's not your dad. They're your parents, no? Yeah. So at the moment, you have no reason at this pleasant moment in time, and correct me if I'm wrong, not to believe in God. Because it's the most logical, rational belief. Huh? No, I don't. What did God do? What did you say? That's another one. No, it's a good one. Very, very good. How is God made if nothing can come from nothing? Thank you. God by definition, Allah by not not necessarily God. Allah by definition is uncreated. Yeah, Allah is always there. You need something um, that's not dependent, uncreated, otherwise the universe won't exist. Does that make sense? And the Quran gives a definition of this 1400 years ago. Yeah, in chapter 112, verse 3. Yeah, um, with a four line definition of God and says, Say Allah is uniquely one. Yeah, He's self sustaining, eternal. Self sustaining, eternal. There's nothing in this universe which is self-sustaining and eternal. Does that, that, that make sense? Yeah. Basically, everything needs something else to exist. Yeah, including Allah, because Allah is self-sustaining, eternal. He doesn't have offspring, nor was he born. He was cr not created. So, 1,400 years ago, a unlettered man, the Prophet Muhammad, is giving us a beautiful, perfect four-line definition of God and the fourth verse is there's nothing comparable there's nothing equal to God there's nothing equal to God actually that's a more correct translation yeah how do you feel about that Are you, do you, does it make sense to you yeah because another simpler way of thinking about it is who created God who created God that created God who, who created God that created that God that created that God that created that God? Yeah? It will just never stop. You, you need something that's uncreated or, yeah, we'll get to the 5,000 God and it's like, yeah, but who created you? <laughs> Where did that come from? Yeah? Make sense? Any questions? I like you, man. I like you. I like you. I like you. I like you. Yeah? Uh, that's the kind of worms I didn't want to open up because I asked the question and if you don't ask the question you won't really like you just wasn't fooled about it and I, I had a conversation yesterday with someone and like, I felt so guilty because it's like she just didn't get it it was like it just blew her mind too much I'm like next time I'm just gonna take it easy you know, open up some kind of worms but yeah um, okay so do you believe in God? do you believe there's a creator? Every, every sentence you say kind of chips away at my thoughts. I would still say I'm not sure. Okay, that's fine. Let me give you some more evidence. Yeah? No, it's good to be honest. Um, so now this is a conversation for Sarah, yeah? So there's God. Yeah? Now, would God create us? Without purpose. No? Okay. Would God tell us what that purpose is? Would God communicate what that purpose is? I think we would try and let you figure it out. Say that again, sorry? I'll let you figure it out. What it is. How about me in the middle? Not let you figure it out, but give you the choice if you choose to believe. Because I. The Islamic position is, there's one God, God created us for a purpose, told us what that purpose is through prophets and messengers. Yeah? To every nation, there was a man chosen amongst my men, to, who was trustworthy, who was known to be upright, to articulate the message. Yeah? Now after they die, the message lives on through a book. Yeah? When the, message, the book gets changed or corrupted, God will send another messenger. Yeah. Now, God sent the final messenger, the Prophet Muhammad. Yeah. And because there's no more messengers to come, God preserved the final revelation, the Quran. Because yeah. now, to convince you there's a God, 
yeah? Let's go into, because it's more logical and rational to believe in a creator. Now let's go to tangible evidence, yeah? My tangible evidence that there's a creator is the Quran. This is a book that's been perfectly preserved from 1400 years ago. This is a book where there's no mistakes, there's no errors um, in it at all. It talks about um, all the major subjects, gets it right. Talks about history, gets it right. Talks about science, gets yeah, it right. Um, that was kind of the, the part that kind of captured me was the, the views of science, which is quite aligned with the views on science that we now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Three billion people. So if there's something that hasn't been changed, there's no mistakes in it, and it's perfect. And my argument is, my claim is, God is perfect. What's from God must be perfect as well. Yeah. Now, um, the Quran, yeah? Allah actually sets the challenge and says, look, um, if you have any doubt, yeah, bring something similar to it. Yeah. Bring something equivalent to it. Yeah. Down to one chapter. Yeah. Okay. The smallest chapter in the Quran is three verses. And as of yet, no one has been able to bring anything like it. The Arabic, the linguistic miracle, the kind of high level of Arabic. Like even on my way here, I was speaking to this brother who was telling me about a um, professor who learned Arabic. Yeah, he, unfortunately, he's not a Muslim, but he actually testifies to the caliber of the Quran, the language in the Quran. Yeah. Um, so may Allah grant him, he died, died into Islam. So then, um, yeah, so things are happening which are distracting me, yeah. Um, I will be to Habibi, just go and defuse that man. He's drunk and he's a teenager. Ego, ego's kicking in. No, he knows he'll win, that's why he's looking for But yeah, uh, going back to this, <laughs> back, yeah. Um, what was I saying, Sarah? Come on, pressure. Don't, don't, don't do that to me. Yeah, you can speak to you, didn't you? Let's see what you got. Who's tracking my fault first? So we're talking about the Quran being preserved, linguistics, miracles. So. Now, when it talks about science, it gets it right, yeah? And there's no mistakes in it, then would you not testify to the fact that it's from God? Yeah. That's, you wanted, you wasn't, um, I'm giving you more evidence. You're someone who's read through the Quran, right? A number of years ago, yeah. Yeah, read through it again, you're gonna benefit in a new way. And you didn't find any issues with it, did you? No, but to be fair, I, w I was more looking for the, for the information that was given to me. I was more looking for that. I didn't look at look at it from a, a view of I'm um, reading a book from start to finish and not knowing anything. Yeah. I was told certain things and I was just trying to verify more. Than but what else. you verified, you was able to verify, right? Yes. Then? Yes. Then? What's your point? Does that make sense? But you didn't read it cover. It's not back to back. That but that specific information is correct. And people, Muslims who spoke to you didn't lie to you. Yeah? If you read it cover to cover and you sat with a scholar, yeah, it's not necessary to sit with a scholar, but there are some things where you would benefit more taking it from someone with knowledge, when was it revealed, what specifically is it talking about then you could bring more of it into your life. But when you read it, you wouldn't have had any issues with it. And I mean, from what you read, you didn't have any issues with it. And if you read all of it, you probably would will practice more Islam for a longer period of time. It will strengthen your faith. Yesterday, 
Um, just yesterday, actually, I was speaking to this American lady who became Muslim, and she studied Islam, and she learned Arabic. I'm like, I'm jealous of you, you know what I mean? I'm, I, I don't even know Arabic, and you know Arabic, you know what I mean? <laughs> I only know a little bit, yeah. not much, not much. Uh, that just reminded me that uh, we're going to get... In fact, you can verify the linguistic miracles of the Quran. Can you read Arabic? If you try to learn, would it be easy for you to learn it? Um, I think parts of it want to because like when I was much younger, I used to get it taught every night. But then as the years have gone on and I've like not had like, like my nan and granddad has not been around since obviously they've passed there, that slowly like disappeared from my memory. So it'll be easier for you to verify what I'm saying about the linguistic miracles. Because I'll be honest with you, that's the argument the Quran uses. My weakness, I don't use it as much as I should, because I feel like for you to truly appreciate it, you're going to have to learn Arabic, or you're going to have to listen to someone else telling you how amazing it is. So the stuff I tell people is stuff they can verify. For example, the preservation of the Quran. If you Google Birmingham Quran manuscript, we have a carbon dated Quran um, verified by Birmingham um, University that says that look it's been preserved to the, in the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him so it's been perfectly preserved we have evidence of that I'm not even going to the Muslim sources I'm not even going to like even in Oxford University they've got verses and chapters of the Quran I mean which they've um, testified as the same Quran that we've got over two million people memorized word for word left for left dot for dot because our primary source of preservation is an oral tradition of memorization. You know, yeah. yeah. No, no, it's all good because the fact of the matter is, look, I would say, um, yeah. So, how, how do you feel about what I've said so far, by the way? Um, I believe in the. I would have anywhere. to read again. Yeah. I'm going to give you a free translation of the Quran. Yeah, I would have yeah. to read again. How do you feel about it, Sarah? Um, By the way, before you say that, hold that fool. I feel like you're coming from a place of skepticism which is unnecessary. Does that make sense? Yeah. And. I truly can't understand it. You didn't see nothing wrong with Islam. You was in Islam. You didn't disagree with it. Whatever you want to verify, you was able to verify you agreed with it. Um, you agree it's more logical and rational to believe in a creator than not to believe in a creator. And still you're like that level of cynicism, like I don't I don't get it. Pardon? Pardon? I'm incredibly impulsive. You don't sound it, mate. Huh? You don't sound it, mate. <laughs> I know but I am. I'm okay. very impulsive, Which is good because I'll be honest with you, the lady the American lady I spoke to you yesterday, right? Who became Muslim. Um she just procrastinated for like three years. She's telling me she she lives near a mosque. She hasn't been had, she wants to go to the mosque. She would open the window, listen to the azan, because it gives her peace. And I thought to myself, if you get peace from listening to the azan, how much more peace are you gonna get from doing the actual prayer? Because the azan is the call to prayer. You're enjoying the call to prayer. Go to prayer and then tell me what that does to your soul. Do you know what I mean? So, like, you have to find that balance. Like, and I'm like, she agreed with everything. She didn't disagree. I'm like, then what's stopping you from becoming a Muslim? And then I had a 40 minute conversation with her. Um, she didn't hesitate. She just delayed. She's like, Inshallah. She's telling me, Inshallah, I'll become Muslim. Yeah. And by the end, when she became Muslim, she thanked me. I go, Do you have any regrets? She said, No, I'm glad. So, Sarah, Sarah, what are you saying? <laughs> I can't remember what the question was now. Yeah, my apologies, my apologies. I was saying, how do you feel about the conversation? How do you feel about Islam? How do you feel about what I've said thus far? Yeah, I've always, I've always been a believer anywhere. Yeah. Um, it's just the ways of life, what get you to not 
Yeah. Say that again, sorry? It's just like the way of life, like some people like maybe environment and other stuff that can lead you away from following a certain religion. I'm going to get you to repeat that one more time because that guy's really being loud there. Yeah. So my apologies. No, it's fine, it's fine. I want to I hear what you're saying. I want to hear what you're saying. It's our environment. Yeah, the environment. It doesn't allow you. you know how a lot of the time you can normally separate yourself from everything yeah. in order to focus on say religion or anything that you are doing. We're consistently um, surrounded by a certain type of way of life, as you can see. So it is so much easier to conform than it is to go your separate way. Even though you can hear as long as you're a huge community, you're not by yourself. It's not even about being by yourself. This, this. Yeah. I mean, but then, um, but then, I don't think you're replying to my question. Because my question is, how do you feel about what I've said? Because you haven't disagreed with what I've said. No, no, no. I, 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 yeah, yeah, I agree. With, I agree. With everything. Like, that was what we knew growing up. Then the objection you've mentioned is that look, due to habit, the society, the community, there's a bit more. Um, difficulty in regards to practicing it but we haven't even got to practicing it does that make sense because in the five pillars I told you the third the fifth the second is practicing it the first is belief so once you affirm what you believe then you can start practicing I was as a young Muslim like struggled with practicing Islam yeah. That's because a lack of knowledge, a lack of Islam, given the importance of it. And now, I've got to a stage where, like not even now, like many years, I can't even remember a time when I didn't use to pray. It's foreign to me. Does that make sense? Like Islam has benefited me by, uh, gave me into a better routine, gave me more focus and benefit like because there's nothing in Islam which is forbidden which is good for you yeah? there's nothing forbidden which is good for you and there's nothing um, which Allah promotes or tells you to do which is bad for you. so I'm saying what's stopping you from leaving this conversation not yourself and what's stopping you from leaving this conversation in um, submitting your will to God, being a Muslim. Okay, more of a touchy subject. Go for it. I'm Caribbean, so I, uh, I come from a highly matriarchal society. Okay. So does that make sense when I say matriarchal? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So it's like um, a lot of. I've got to say it. Uh, a lot of views and a lot of practices regarding men, that women and females don't fit in to what I've grown up with. Does that make sense? Regarding the right attire that's meant to be worn, the attitude towards life. And I wouldn't say job role, I wouldn't say so much that, but doesn't it completely bounce its head with what I've grown up with and what I deem as right. That makes sense. I I'm say confused. So Jamaica Grenadia. So it's close to Jamaica. My apologies. <laughs> Grenadia. <laughs> Grenadia is has a lot of practice which you disagree with currently. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. No, no, no. Day -day -day very, day -day very, very simply so put. Because I don't get how this is connected to Islam. What I mean is, well, no, I'm talking about my, my differences with Islam. Uh, say, for instance, my mum is in our family, or our nan is the Sorry. most person and the, the, the word. Yeah. Okay. So what she says goes. Yeah. Uh, in that kind of sense. Kind of, uh, but that being said, where where is choices between so as far as I'm concerned, what my mom said when uh, how she dressed, how, how she acted was up to her. There was no uh, what's the word? There's no 
no restrictions in any sense. So what, why are you trying to drive that in Islam there's restriction? I would say so regarding choice. Because obviously it's what, 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 what choice is? Because the fact of the matter is, when it comes, give me one specific thing. You mentioned dress code. I wouldn't say choice. Are you talking more like um, obviously when you wear a headscarf? It's not, it's, it's, it's not just, it's not just that. Everyone does it regardless. But you got you to gotta be more specific, my bro. What I mean is... I know, we're going to be out of time as well. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, what I mean is, uh, not so much being forced, uh, it being the basis of religion. Specifically, the fact of the matter is, the must-wear element of it is, it's a journey. So it's, do you want to follow the commandments of God? Yeah. Submit your will to God. Yeah. Now, if you don't dress like that, are you a disbeliever? No. If you don't dress like the fact of the matter is, show me a single picture of Mother Mary in a bathing suit. Yeah. She dressed modestly. She dressed modestly. The most religious women in the church, they dress modestly. Yeah, nuns. Now, if there was a woman, look your ear, young man, a woman running up and down Stratford wearing nothing but just shorts, what would happen to her? She would get arrested. arrested. Public indecency. Now, if a man ran up and down wearing nothing but just shoes, what would happen to him? Nothing. So even the country we're living in stipulates that women have to cover up more. And I'm saying... Now, I'm saying God knows best. I'm going to follow what God says. There's six criteria for the dress code for men as well as women. Yeah. Five of them are exactly the same. Five are exactly the same, only one is different, which is how much you cover. And I'm saying, before we go into the rules, let's establish, like, should we obey the one who set the rules? Should we agree, should we worship the one who set the rules? Is the rule set up? And I'm saying, yeah, that's God, not man. Does it make sense? Because that's backed up by the Quran. That's backed up by the Prophet Muhammad. A man who said in his final sermon, um, no Arab is better than a non-Arab. Sorry. Yeah. No white man is better than a black man. Yeah. He's there abolishing racism. Yeah. He's giving women's rights. Yeah. So the only thing, um, and that's the most important in the side, God loosely translated the newest meaning, is taqwa, God consciousness. Can you imagine? It's not what I wear, it's not what phone I have, what car I drive. It's something that you can't see, no one can see, it's in my heart. Only God knows. And that's what hires your rights. So I'm saying that, look, your nan. Where was her husband slash partner? My Yeah. But at that point, was he right? Because just generally. Yeah, but he was kind of. Yeah, when I was young, he was. Yeah. He was kind of. A bit passive, a bit out of the scene. Yeah. No, no, but then he was, they didn't live. They didn't live in the same house, right? Oh, they did. Okay. Because yeah, even yesterday, I had a scenario where someone was telling me about like the roles of proper upside down. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. And um, my colleague was saying, oh, my grand, my father-in-law like, loved up my mother-in-law and he done the cooking, like he done the cleaning and all that kind of stuff. And I go like, who was working? Like the fact of the matter is. The system created by Allah, right, has given specific roles for men and women which play up to their strengths. There's always exceptions to the story, yeah, to the scenario. However, generally speaking, like the laws of Allah works. So my point is, look, the Prophet peace be upon him, yeah, he took advice from his wife. He had to make a decision when, um, in a time of Hajj, he had to come out of Ikhram, which none of this stuff means, means anything to you guys. But then he consulted his wife. 
So it's, it's within the Sunnah, it's advice for us to actually do concentration with our wives. I'm not just going to come up and say like, I'm the man, this is what I say. Okay? However, Islam does give that authority to men because they have an extra degree of responsibility. Does that make sense? I roll up, my money, you know, you're going to love this. I don't know how you're going to feel about this, my brother. Sorry, man. Yeah, your money is yours as well as your spouse's. Yeah? Oh, no, that's cool, that's cool. Anyway. Her money belongs to her. Her money belongs to her. Now, if she wants to share it with you, that's her choice. But you can't compel her, she can't be forced. Does that make sense? So, at that day, there's different, like, the way Allah, God Almighty, balances things out. She's got a big smile on her face, she's loving it. Where do I sign? I want a piece of this. Do you know what I mean? So, because I know when you're in a rush, I'm going to wrap up very quickly. From what I've said, um, are you closer to looking into Islam? Do you want to become Muslim now? Like, where you at, Sarah? And how would you feel about her decision? Um, yeah, well, I would have nothing to do with it. Yeah. I think slightly you know, at, at, at a young age was kind of put into the environment anyway. I, I personally would I would look into it. I would like to read again at 34 and not 23. Yeah, yeah. I would like to read it now with the mindset I have now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do that. Yeah, yeah. So but I'm going to give you a free translation of Quran. Sarah, can I give you a free translation of Quran? Yeah. Young man's got a free translation for But anyway, how do you feel about this I conversation? I have one, but I can't find it. No, 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 that's fine, that's fine, I'll give it to you. I was given from someone to yeah. a good friend. How do you feel, Tata? Yeah. Well, give do you have any questions for me? No. There's a lot to take. There's a lot, there's a lot. I've got a lot of Islamic friends anyway. Yeah? So, right. So, Sarah, any questions for me? Yeah. Are you sure? I think there's more research to be done yes. as well. Yeah. Um, but I was always, like, when it comes to any religion, I was always more towards oh, yeah, most Muslim than any other religion. Yeah. Anywhere. That's, that's why I went in that direction in the first place. Uh, uh, my thought acts. Well, 20 odd. You can't have 20 books of the same stuff. Listen straight, New Testament, all the things that I've got, the same information, just different people, but different things. So I kind of put me all out. So, yeah, definitely, I would welcome a, another conversation. Um, I'm going to give you both Qur'ans. Two Qur'ans, please, take away. <laughs> you like that, yeah? <laughs> there you go, madam. Sorry, I'm not going to. So, this is English translation. Um, I've got one. I would say that look. Um, yeah, do you guys want a bigger one? No, I've got a big hardback somewhere. We've got, we've got a hardback. I don't think we brought it today. I don't know if we got it today. Um, Habibi, Hamza, do we have a big one today? Do this, take this with you, and then. No, 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 no. You can just you can go to QuranProject.com and they'll send it to you free of charge. QuranProject.com. Yeah, or you can come back on another Saturday and we'll be here. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. I sincerely appreciate your time. Appreciate that. Thank you, my bro. Young man, thank you. Thank you. See you later.